Agricola, how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is lay out the game board and you'll attach this extra board based on the player count. So I'm setting this up for a two player game so I've used the attachment for two players. At higher player counts this attachment will add additional action spots that provide scaling. Next you'll separate and shuffle all the stage cards in the game. There's six stages and then this player aid allows players to see potentially the order or what could come up in each stage. So for example in stage one we know there's the sheep market action, the grain utilization action, the major improvement, and the fencing action, but because they're shuffled we don't know exactly which order they'll come up. In the final stage we know it's always going to be the farm redevelopment. So once you've shuffled the cards by stage you can either lay them out in their specific spot on the game board or just stack them on top of each other so the stage one cards are on top. Next you'll set out the major improvement cards. You're going to shuffle the deck of minor improvement cards. These are the orange backs and all the occupation cards. Before shuffling the occupation deck make sure you remove any cards for player counts that don't apply. For each player, give them a player board. You're going to randomly deal them seven minor improvement cards and seven occupation cards. Each player is going to start with two wood rooms in their house. Each player is going to start with three food. They're going to start with two workers, one for each room, and then they'll have a supply that they can get throughout the game of an additional three workers, uh, four stables, and fences. Randomly choose a start player, and that player will get only two food to start the game. Set out the supply of fields, extra wooden rooms, clay rooms, stone rooms, and begging tokens. Finally, create the supply of wood, clay, reed, food, and stone along with the grain and vegetables, the sheep, the wild boar or pigs, and cattle. And you're ready to start the game. Each round is played in three steps. The first step for each round is you'll reveal the new round card. Next you'll replenish all the accumulation spots on the board. The accumulation spots are any space with an arrow. You'll see some of the cards have arrows too. So you'll add the indicated number of resources to the spot. And there may be resources left there from the prior round. You simply add to whatever's already there. So here, since it's the start of the game, we'll add one sheep. We'll add three wood here. We'll add a clay. We'll add a reed. And we'll add a food. You'll see other spots don't get resources added to them. It's just always a set number of resources that are taken when that action is selected. The third step of each round is the work phase. So we're going to go in clockwise order, starting with the start player. And then each player takes one turn to choose an available action on the board using one of their available family members. Once an action space is occupied by another player, no one else can go there. The round will end once all players have played all of their available family members to select an action. Then we'll go through the steps of the next round by revealing the next card, replenishing uh, the accumulation spaces, and then repeating the work phase again with the action selection. So let's start to cover all of the different actions, starting with the board actions. So if a player came here and chose this action spot, they'd place their worker there, and they would take all the available resources for that spot. In this example, there were three wood there, and so they'd simply add them to their supply. By coming to the clay pit, this allows the player to take all the accumulated clay that's here. The reed bank allows them to take all of the reed in the space. If they come to the fishing spot, they get to take all of the accumulated food. This day laborer spot allows them to take exactly two food. Coming to the lessons spot allows the player to play one of their occupation cards. This specific spot allows them to play their first occupation for free. 
So if the player has not played an occupation yet, they do not have to pay anything, and then every subsequent time they come here, you could see they have to pay one food to play one occupation card. They would simply select any of their available occupation cards, play it face up, and this now gives them an ability uh, potentially for the rest of the game. The farmland spot allows the player to plow one field, so they would take one of these field tiles and place it on an empty spot on their player board. If they already had an existing field, any new fields added have to be orthogonally adjacent to any, any existing fields. The grain seeds spot allows them to take exactly one grain from the supply and add it to their supply of resources. The meeting place allows a couple different options. You're able to guarantee that you'll be the starting player for the next round and or you can play one of your minor improvement cards. So if a player came here and said I'm going to take that action, they're going to be the start player at the beginning of the next round and they may decide whether they want to play one of their minor improvements. Here are some of the minor improvement cards. You'll have potentially a prerequisite in the upper left. So for example, to play this card, you have had to have already played three occupation cards. And then in the upper right, there's a potentially a cost to play the card. So this one doesn't have a prerequisite, but it requires one wood to play the card. This one required you to meet the prerequisite, but there was no cost to play. And then some may have both. The farm expansion spot allows you to add additional rooms to your house. You can only build rooms based on the type of farm you have at the moment. So since I only have wooden rooms, I'm only allowed to add wooden rooms to my house. I could not add, I could not build clay or stone rooms until I've done what's called a renovation later in the game and I've renovated my entire house. To add rooms, each additional room, specifically for the wood rooms, require five wood and two reed for each additional room. If I had renovated later in the game, it would take five clay and two reed for each additional clay room, and then subsequently five stone and two reed for each additional stone room. So if you had the resources, let's say you had 10 wood and four reed, you could build two rooms at once by taking this action. So based on the number of resources you have, you could do this multiple times. But let's say I just had five wood and two reed, that's all I had. So I would take one wood room and you have to add it to a space orthogonally adjacent to an existing room in your house. The farm expansion also allows me to build stables. So for two wood each, I can build uh, as many stables as possible. Each player can only ever build a maximum of four stables. By placing it there, that's basically allowing me now I could store one animal within this stable. Later we'll talk about fencing. If you put it within a fenced area, which is called a pasture, it's going to double the capacity of that pasture. An important point about all the action selection spaces, a player is not allowed to come and take the action if they cannot perform it. So if they did not have enough resources to build a room or build a stable, they could not come here just to block it from another player. But you can see this is an and or spot. So as long as they're able to perform either this one or this one, this is a legal placement for them. All right, let's start to cover some of the actions on the cards. I fast forwarded a little bit to put out all the action cards for stage one. So by coming here, it allows the player to take all of the accumulated uh, sheep in the sheep market. They would have to have available room uh, in their farm to hold the sheep or potentially a fireplace to process the sheep but we'll cover that later. The fencing area allows the player to build fences at one wood per fence. So let's cover this one in depth. So let's say a player comes there to build fences. They have seven wood, so this allows them to build seven fences. And let's say they'd like to create a couple pastures here. 
So the player would turn in their seven wood, and then I've laid out the fences this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what this has done is any area that's completely fenced in is now considered a pasture, and it can hold animals in pastures. So each fenced in area, this spot can now hold two animals. They can only be the same type of animal, so you couldn't hold a cattle and a pig in the same pasture. But since it's fenced in, it can now hold two animals. Any pasture that also has a stable inside of it is doubled. So now this spot normally could hold two, this could hold four of the same type of animal. And if the player decided they didn't want to build this dividing fence and saved a wood, this is considered now one large pasture with two spaces. So since it's still one pasture, the same type of animal has to be in here. So you couldn't mix animals, but each space gives you two, and then the stable would double that. So this pasture could hold four plus four, so eight of the same type of animal. Now, if the stable wasn't present, then the capacity wouldn't have been doubled. It would have been two plus two. So you could hold four of the same type of animal. So stables let you double the capacity of the enclosed pasture. As a reminder, a stable by itself gives you a capacity of just one animal in that space. And then by adding this middle divider, this pasture doesn't get the bonus of the stable, but now different types of animals can be stored in each one of these since they're separate pastures. And the same orthogonal rules apply, just like when placing new rooms or new fields, when building new pastures or fenced in areas, they have to be orthogonally adjacent to existing pastures. One additional rule about storing animals is the player can always have one animal stored in their house. It doesn't matter how many rooms they have, they can ever only have just one animal stored within their private dwelling, in addition to whatever capacity they have in pastures or stables. To illustrate further, I have fast forwarded and this player has built some additional fences and stables, and you could see that they're at their limit in each of the animal storage areas. So their home, no matter how big it is, could only store one animal, so they have a pig in their house. This spot, it's not fenced in, so it's not a pasture, but it has one stable, so it can store one animal, so it's storing a pig. This fenced in pasture has a stable, so it doubles capacity, so it goes from two, now they can store four animals in it. This fenced in pasture can only store two per space, so it has two boar, and this pasture that's fenced all the way around has three spaces, so normally each space could only hold two animals, but you can see they've added a stable here. They've doubled the capacity of this one pasture, so now each space can hold four animals. Now since it is one pasture, they all have to be the same type, and in this example it's cattle. You can also see in this example that pastures share fence lines, but players are limited to the number of fences they have in their supply. So once they're all used, they could not build anymore. You're also never allowed to change the configuration once they're built. So once a fence is placed, it's going to stay there for the remainder of the game. The same with pastures. You can never reconfigure your rooms or your fields or your pastures. The next action spot is the major improvement spot. It allows you to play either a major or a minor improvement. We've already talked about minor improvements, so let's cover the major improvements now. So the major improvements are available to all players at the beginning of the game. It requires that the player comes to the spot, takes the action, and then is also able to pay the required resources indicated here in the upper right of the card. So for example, to play the fireplace or to take the fireplace, it requires two clay. You'll also see that all the major improvements provide end game victory points that are listed right there on the left side of the card. Some provide more than others. The major improvements allow the player flexibility in terms of creating food for the most part. 
So if the player, let's say they wanted this fireplace, they came there to the major improvement spot, they had two clay to turn in to play it, and they would take this to their player board. Now at any time, they're allowed to convert vegetables into two food, sheep into two food, pigs into two food, or cattle into three food. And this can be done at any time in the game. They could take any one of their available resources and immediately convert it into food. Also, it gives them the ability to take the bake bread action when that becomes available. So we'll cover that later as a future action. Baking bread cannot be done at any time like these conversions. The second fireplace has the same abilities as the first one. It just costs an additional clay. So the first player to get here will get the cheaper fireplace. The next player will get the slightly more expensive fireplace. The cooking hearth costs four clay, or you're able to return a fireplace. If you already had a fireplace, you could turn that back in and take this instead of paying the four clay. And it gives you slightly better uh, conversion into food in addition to the baked bread action. This is a second cooking hearth that costs a little bit more. You can see the well provides a lot of victory points. It costs a wood and three stone to take, but it allows you to place one food on each of the next five round spaces when it's taken. And then at the start of those rounds, you actually get the food. The clay oven allows you to convert a grain into five food, but you can only do it once whenever the baked bread action is available. And when you take the card for the first time to, and build the clay oven by paying the resources, it allows you to, to immediately take the baked bread action. So just by taking this major improvement and paying it, you could immediately convert one of your grain into the food. You can see you can only do that one time. But then subsequently, you could do the, you could use this clay oven whenever you went to a spot that allowed the baked bread action. The stone oven works the same way. It requires stone and clay to build. It allows you to immediately do the baked bread action. Uh, but the stone oven, instead of doing one grain once into five food, you can convert you can do it up to two times. Each time you convert a grain, you would get four food. The joinery requires two wood and two stone to build, but during the harvest phase, it allows the player one time to convert a wood into two food, and it's also gonna provide end game scoring bonuses. Some of the cards have this little gold coin icon, and that means there's end game victory points available. So at the end of the game, if they had three wood, they could get one victory point. If they had five, they could get two victory points. And if they had seven, they could get three victory points. You can see it's only a one-time uh, conversion based on the amount of wood they have to get victory points at game end. Pottery works the same way, but it requires clay and stone. During the harvest, you can convert a clay into two food. And at the end of the game, based on remaining clay, you could earn additional victory points. And then finally, the Basket Makers Workshop, much the same. It costs reed and stone to build. During the harvest, you can convert one reed into three food. And at the end of the game, for the remaining reed that you have, you could earn additional victory points, in addition to the base two victory points, just by having this card provides. Grain utilization, it allows you to sow grain and vegetables into any empty fields. So you have to have the grain and vegetable in your supply, but when you place them, you get an additional two grain from the supply added to the field, and if it was a vegetable, you would get one vegetable from the supply added to that field. And by coming here, it also gives you the option to do both of these things or one or the other, but one of the options is the baked bread action if you have a major improvement that provides that ability. The nice thing about the sowing action is based on the amount of resources you have and the number of empty fields you have, you can take this action once and do it multiple times. So in this example, I've got three empty fields and I have three seeds that I can plant. So I could plant the vegetable there and I could plant these grains here. And then I would add from the supply one vegetable here and then two to each of these.
So I've done that here. Now if I took the grain utilization action and I didn't have an empty field to sow, then I, I would not be able to even take the action. Or if I just had one empty field, as long as I had a seed, I could only plant that. You can't plant until the field has been depleted. And a reminder on the baked bread action, the grain from the baked bread action has to come from your supply. It can't come from your fields. These will only be removed during the harvest. So if you had multiple grain in your supply, you could take this action as many times as you'd like to turn in grain for two food using this fireplace if you came there that gave you the option to use the baked bread action. At the end of each of the six stages, there's going to be a harvest. And you can see the harvest comes quicker and quicker. So the first harvest isn't going to come until after four rounds have been played. The second harvest, at the end of stage two, there would have been three rounds. At the end of stage three, the harvest will come after two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, and the final harvest, the stage six harvest, will come after just one round of play. So you'll remember normally at the end of a round, players would take back their workers, we'd reveal the next round card, and we'd refill the accumulation spaces. Before we do that, we're going to take the special harvest actions first. So there are three things that happen during the harvest. First, players get to remove one good from each of their sown fields, and they would just add those to their personal supply. The second step is they have to feed all of their people. So each of their active people require two food each. So this player only has two food, but they've got two workers, so they're two short. So they have a couple options. Since they have a fireplace, they could immediately, you'll remember at any time, they could convert some of their livestock or even some of their vegetables that maybe just got pulled off during the harvest. They could convert that to food to meet the requirement. They could not bake bread though. This requires, the bake bread action can only happen when you go to an action spot allowing baked bread. Grain or vegetables can also be used to meet the food requirement. Uh, it's just one to one. So if you wanted to, you could use these two grain and the vegetables to meet the requirement for three food. Or the last option, if they cannot meet the food requirement, they're gonna have to take a begging token for each food that they're short. And this represents three less victory points at the end of the game. The last step of the harvest phase is animal breeding. As long as you have two or more of an animal type and you have room to store the animal, your animals will breed. So in this example, I've got two pig, it doesn't matter where they are on your farm board, and I have room for the pig, I will get one additional type from the supply. Likewise, I have at least two sheep and I have room for the sheep. So I would get one that I could store in that pen because I have room. And then finally, even though I have all this cattle, I still only ever get one max of a type. And since I have room there in that pasture, I could get one cattle from the supply. If you did not have room to store the animal, they would not breed and you would not get that bonus. So once you've completed the three steps of the harvest, you're ready to move on to the next round. So I've laid out the additional action spots so we can see how they work. Uh, the Western Quarry, if a player comes here, they can take all the accumulated stone. The basic Wish for Children, by coming here, the player would get an additional worker. You can see they have to have room for the additional worker. So at the start of the game, you only have two rooms in your house. So you would have had to build at least a third room or more to be able to take this spot. So assuming you meet the requirement, you would take the action as normal, and then you would take one of your available workers from the supply and put it right there. And then now you would get the access to that worker at the end of this round when you take all your workers back. You can see this action spot also allows you to and afterward, take one minor improvement. This isn't an and or, so you couldn't come to this spot to just do that. You first have to 
add to your family, and then it allows you to do a minor improvement. One other rule, let's say this action card came out here right before the harvest and you never had the chance to use that worker. During the feeding people phase, this worker, the baby, only requires one food instead of the normal two food for each of your workers. The house redevelopment action allows you to renovate your entire house. You can go from wood to clay and then later from clay to stone. It requires one reed and then for each room that you're renovating, if you're going from wood to clay, it requires a clay for each room. And if you're going from clay to stone, it requires a stone for each room. It's also important to remember that you have to renovate your entire house to a new type. So let's say earlier in the game you renovated your house from wood to clay and now you had five clay rooms and you came here again later in the game and you wanted to renovate from clay to stone, you would need the five stone plus the one reed to renovate to a stone house. You can't renovate parts of your house or only certain rooms. You have to go completely from wood to clay first and then from clay to stone. You also can't go directly from wood to stone. You have to do it in order. After you do this, you have the option of playing either a major improvement or a minor improvement. The vegetable seeds action allows the player to get exactly one vegetable. You'll see it's not an accumulation spot. The pig market allows the player to take all the accumulated pigs that may have been adding up there from round to round. It's also important to realize that even if you don't have room for it, you can take these if you're able to immediately convert them using a major improvement. The Eastern Quarry lets you take all the accumulated stone. The Cattle Market lets you take all the accumulated cattle. The Cultivation Action lets you first plow one field and or lets you take the Sow Action. So it's powerful because you could do both. You could first plow the field and then sow all of your empty fields based on the seeds that you have. Or you could see it's an and or you could maybe you didn't have room in your area for an additional field you may take it just to do the so action the other stage five action card is the urgent wish for children if a player comes here and takes that action spot they get an additional worker even if they do not have room in their house for the additional worker the final action spot in the game for stage six is the farm re redevelopment it allows you to do a renovation in your house and then after the renovation, it allows you to take the build fences action, one wood per fence. At the end of stage six, you would go through the harvest process as normal. And then once you complete the harvest, you're ready for end game scoring. Players are gonna earn points based on how well they've developed their farm over the course of the game. Here you can see the different points you earn in each of the different categories. So the first category is for field tiles. These are these tiles on your board. You can see if you don't have any, or if you have one, zero to one, you're gonna get minus one point. If you have two, you're gonna get one, three, two, four, three, and then if you have five or more, you would get four victory points. The same scoring for pastures. If you have zero pastures, you're gonna get minus one point. Remember, a pasture is a fenced-in area. So this player has one pasture, two pasture, three pastures total. So in this example, three pastures, they would get three points. Next, each player is going to earn points for the amount of grain, vegetables, sheep, wild boar, and cattle that they have in their supply. And you can see it's based on the number that they have. For the grain and the vegetable, it can be either in their supply or on their board, even if it hasn't been harvested yet. You get to count all those pieces, and then based on the count, the player would earn that many victory points. The same thing works for the animals or the livestock. Based on the count of each of the animal types, the player could earn victory points. For each unused Farmyard space, the player is going to get minus one victory points. So in this example, they can see they've got one, 
two, three, four. That would be minus four victory points for four unused spots. This spot is considered used because they at least put a stable there. For each fenced stable, the player is going to get one victory point. So in this example, you can see this stable is within a fenced area, and so is this one. So that's one, two points. This stable is not fenced, so that would not be eligible for that victory point. If players were able to upgrade to clay, they would get one point per clay room in their house. And if they were up, able to upgrade to stone, they would get two points per stone room in their house. Players will earn three points for each of their workers. Players can ever only have a maximum of five workers. So the maximum here is 15 points total if they were able to get all five workers in the game. And then finally, you're going to score victory points from each of the cards. So you're going to check your cards, score victory points that may be indicated on the major improvements or the minor improvements. Also, if there were victory points that are eligible based on other types of cards, those would get all scored at the end. So you'd simply tally up everyone's score in each of the categories. Most points wins the game. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Agricola.